Today we're going to be talking about perpendicular lines. And our definition of perpendicular lines is two lines that intersect to form right angles. So each one of these angles is a right angle. And that's, remember that little corner is our notation. For right angles, how we write that two lines are perpendicular is M perpendicular to L. Now there's some theorems involving perpendicular lines that are going to be key to us. So important theorems, which angles are congruent? Well we know by the definition of perpendicular lines that angle one is a right angle because angle one and angle two add up to 180. Angle two is a right angle because a vertical angle is congruent, two is equal to four. And because vertical angles are congruent, one is equal to three. So then if two lines are perpendicular, then they form, they form congruent adjacent angles. So then if two lines form congruent adjacent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. Notice how that's the original conditional and our converse. Those are both true because if two lines form congruent adjacent angles. So I have two lines and this angle is equal to that angle because those angles have to add up to 180 and they're both equal, they're both equal to 90. So therefore, as a biconditional, two lines are perpendicular. Remember that's our if and only if. They form congruent adjacent angles. Okay, another theorem. If the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are perpendicular, so that means that I have two adjacent angles, one and two, they're sharing the common side and no common interior points. We know that this side is perpendicular to this side. Therefore, angle one and angle two have to add up to what? Angle one and angle two have to add up to 90 degrees. What's our def definition of two angles that add up to 90? Complementary. So then our theorem is the angles, the exterior sides of two adjacent angles are perpendicular, then the angles are complementary. Okay, writing out, writing out reasons, and I think it's important that we determine what our reasons are. Okay, so if AB is perpendicular to BC, then ABC is a right angle. That is our definition of perpendicular lines. Second one, if BD is perpendicular to AC, and three is equal to four, that's our theorem that two perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. Third step, if DC is perpendicular to DA, then seven and eight are complementary. That's our um, exterior sides. If the exterior sides of adjacent angles are perpendicular, the angles are complementary. Number four. Seven and eight are complementary, 
then 7 plus 8 equals 90. That's definition of complementary. Okay, make sure you're understanding the difference between those. In a proof, 3 and 4 would be two separate steps. 5. 4 is equal to 6, then AC is perpendicular to BD. That's the converse of number 2. Um, congruent adjacent angles form two perpendicular lines. Number six, four is equal to five. Remember, that's not definition of vertical angles. That's a theorem that we prove, vertical angles congruent. And then number seven, if ADC, if ADC is a right angle, then the measure of ADC is equal to 90. That is our definition. Oh, I apologize. I was going to say right angle. Yeah, no, that's definition of a right angle. I was going to say definition of perpendicular. That's definition of a right angle. Okay, some algebra involving this. If BE is perpendicular to AC, so mark up that diagram. And BD is perpendicular to BF, mark up that diagram. Find the value of X. So angle 2 is equal to 2X plus 10. Angle 3 is equal to 40. Well, we know if the exterior sides are perpendicular, the angles inside are complementary. So I know that 2x plus 10 plus 40 has to add up to 90. So 2x plus 50 is equal to 90. 2x is equal to, if I subtract 50, I get 40. Therefore, x is equal to 20. Next example. Same thing. We have... BE perpendicular to AC, and then we have BD perpendicular to BF. I have angle 1 is equal to 3x plus 1, 2 is equal to 4x plus 5, and 3 is equal to 2x plus 13. Now, sometimes you're not going to need you to use all the info. I know angles 1 and 2 are complementary because I have perpendicular lines. So I have 3x plus 1 plus 4x plus 5 equals 90. So I have 7x plus 6 is equal to 90. If I subtract 6, I get 84. Therefore, x is equal to 12. That's one method. There's also another equation we could set up. And let's see if we get the same thing for x. I could set up that 4x plus 5 plus 2x plus 13 equals 90 because 2 and 3 are complementary. So therefore, 4x plus 2x, that's 6x plus 18 is equal to 90. If I subtract 18, x is equal to 12. So I get 12 both ways. So either equation can work. And that's the fun part about geometry. Sometimes there's going to be more than one equation that can work. There are your lesson questions for the day. Please make sure those are submitted on time.